Hi, God feelers. Hello. Happy Thanksgiving for anybody who's celebrating that. I'm just waiting for a, sh a few seconds so everybody can hop on. And I'll try to figure out the air condition because I'm super extremely sweaty. And let's see. Let's do high. Let's see what happens. Oh no, not more touch. Okay, guys, when you're just joining, hi, everybody. Peggy's figuring out the, uh, the fan speed on the air condition. Up, there we go. I think that will work. Making horrible noise. All right, who is here? Who of you is here, guys? I already see Tara, San, Shireen, Fatima. Who else is here? All on time. I like you so much. Let's see. All right. Just taking a few sips of... Um, this is minty latte. I've invented that term right now. Minty latte. And minty latte is with... Minty, very complicated, and some almond milk, and it actually tastes good. Who would have thought that? Hi, Juan Fernandez. Hi, Shireen. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Luke. All right, shall we get started? Happy Thanksgiving for anybody who's celebrating that. Um, I'm definitely feeling very thankful. Um, I'm always, you know, any opportunity to be grateful, I'm using. So let's use Thanksgiving right now because why not? And yeah, I'm just really, really thankful for you being here. Maybe it's your first time. Maybe you are um, like Sarah, somebody who's here for a longer period of time and just coming back and back again. Um, high milk, she milkshake maybe. And so I wanted to say thank you for, for you being here. This is not something that most people do. You are an exception because gut feeders are not so many yet on the planet. And I really, really believe that this is the future for us to feel more empowered and actually take our health in our own hands. And by you doing that, by you taking care of your body and um, listening inside and, and learning to really understand this whole complex universe that your body is, you are being an example. It's impossible to not affect the surroundings, your surroundings, your, your microsystem where you live, your ecosystem with what you're doing. So whenever you eat, drink the celery juice, even if somebody, nobody's looking, people will feel it when you meet them. They will feel it in your energy field that you are, you are focusing on your health and you're really trying to um, yeah, go beyond the usual, just taking medication and listening to doctors and just basically you out there fix me approach, you know, and you're being an example for the future human beings. This is really this is why I'm so grateful for that you're here right now, that you're listening, even if you're watching this as a replay. Um, so welcome, welcome, warm welcome to and happy Thanksgiving to you, gut feeler. Thank you for everybody who's joining. Health and hygiene. Ayofe, Ryan. Amazing, guys. Okay, good. So before we get started, by the way, I would love to hear um, just where you're listening from right now. I know Sarah is from the UK. I know that because I know Sarah. She's a one-on-one -on -one client, also part of the Gut Feeler Academy. Um, Susanne from Germany. I guess that means Germany in Germany. Where are you listening from, guys? I'm in Panama City right now in my little city apartment, UK, Tara. Oh, Sarah, I know it's cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sweating. I have the air conditioning on. And the birds get crazy. Fatima from Saudi Arabia. Juan Fernandez from Chicago. Hi to Chicago. Australia, whoo, Claudia, amazing. Where, where, where are you from, Marcy? Marcy Russell. And all the others who haven't commented. Okay, guys, let's get started. Let's take a moment. I would love to, with you, just take a moment to arrive here together and honoring this special day as especially for the, uh, for the Americans, the Thanksgiving Day, together with you. So I invite you, in case you're not in your car or need to attend to something, just closing your eyes for a short moment of time. Maybe you want to put your hands on your heart, if that feels comfortable. I don't want to touch the microphone, <laughs> if, you, if you want to do that. Or on your belly, whatever feels good. Just to take a moment to connect with yourself. And connect with your breath 
and take a few moments to get to go inside to listening inside into your own ecosystem what's happening there inside of you and see if you can shift that focus from outwards and questions and looking at Peggy and you know being excited maybe or in pain to go more inside to be to reconnect with what you're feeling in this in this moment right now I'm going to keep breathing. When you start to think, just come back to the breathing. And then if you haven't done it already, put your hands over your heart. And see what comes when I ask you the question, what are you grateful for in this moment? What are you grateful for? No matter if it's Thanksgiving for you in your country right now or not, if you don't even know what Thanksgiving is, fine too. Just right now, what are you, what are you grateful for? What comes up? Maybe you want to speak it out loud. That's even more powerful to speak out and use your voice. And then when you got a few things, take the one that touches you the most, the one that you feel like the deepest gratitude for and put it in the comment box for me and just share it with us here in the chat. Honoring Thanksgiving, honoring you, honoring you being here and taking the time out of your day or out of your evening. So write me something that you're grateful for right now that touches you the most, that had the most impact when you felt it. Being a gut feeler, oh, Sarah, I didn't pay you for writing that, right? <laughs> what else, what else, guys? I'm grateful for my healing journey, being content, fiance and step stepdaughters how far i come on my healing journey amazing that's awesome guys this acknowledgement of where you are in your healing journey and that you already made some steps even if you're not feeling already uh, not yet feeling completely healed and things like that that's the best the fast track to healing really so i'm glad that a few of you already um, pointed that out, my health, realizing my mood was affected by food, it's powerful, for my grandmother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> uh, Thank you, guys. <laughs> now it comes back to great your gratefulness. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, whatever you've been thankful for, being alive, that's a big one. Yes. Whatever you've been grateful for, feel, see if you can take that today into your, into your day or maybe even into your night um, if it's already evening for you. And yeah, honoring Thanksgiving Day today in this way. Now, before we get started with the questions, oops, and I'm falling off the chair. <laughs> Improvised, sweaty. I'm so sweaty, guys. I know in, your, in Europe it's super cold, but I'm just so warm. I think it's both the adrenaline and the temperature and the moisture. It rained the whole day. So um, before we get to the, to get to the um, answering your questions, I would love to answer a question that I get all the time, anywhere, everywhere. And chances might be that you are relating to that question or you've had that question before. And I really feel um, I want to I just share it with you because I might, it might help you on your healing journey, no matter where you are. So it's a short story. And it's, um, start, it all started from the idea to share this, started from a session that I had with a new client today. Her name is Lisa. And um, she asked me the, the question, you know, I, share, I said it before, it's coming up all the time. How long does it take to heal my, and then fill in the blank? In her case, it was acid reflux. She, had digest, she has digestive issues and anxiety. And how long does it take to heal? 
how long does it take in you in how how long does it take for all the other clients that I've worked with before? What should I what what do I think estimates guesstimates? Just give me give me some give me a number kind of thing. Let me know um, while I'm figuring out. I'm getting really too windy here <laughs> of the air condition. Let me know if that's a question that you had as well. Like this, how long is this going to take? You know, tell somebody tell me when am I going to be healed or when are the symptoms going away? Just uh, let me know in the questions if you relate to this. Have I mentioned that I hate air conditioning? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Air direction, that might help. Okay. So let me see if you relate to this. Yes. Okay, Fatima Mira relates to it, Sarah as well. Yeah, it's been six months and you wonder how long it's gonna take. Okay, all right guys, good. Happy you're relating. So, now, um, the thing is with, with Lisa, um, she's been dealing. She's um, she has been dealing with major with major symptoms only since two years. You know, only two years, and I'm saying only two years because most of the clients I'm working with they are dealing with that for a decade, a decade or longer, and they're running from specialist to specialist, doing all kinds of crazy testing, taking dozens of medication. They are usually over medicated, and in Lisa's case, it was just just two years, and um, sometimes. You know, sometimes what I also encounter is sometimes there's a trigger. For Lisa, it was uh, she was she had she was just been through a divorce process and she got unemployed. Uh, she got unemployed and she got a minor surgery. Nothing great, nothing big, but all those three coming, all those three things coming together, basically triggered her symptoms massively uh, two years ago. And um, but sometimes. It's just gradually, really. It just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. You know, so it doesn't have to be like the big uh, trigger. Sometimes it's just a something that happens over over time, just pro um, progressively. Now back to the question: How long does it take to heal? How long? How long should I wait? Uh, how long should I think? Um, my answer to that is: It usually takes longer than you think. Now I'm not saying this because I wanted to, you know, like just, you know, forget about it. Just don't want to be mean or anything like that. The opposite, because what everybody else is telling you is telling you, oh, just do this, and you're going to be healthy and happy forever, right? Just the medication myth. This is what I what I'm talking about. Even if it's not a medication, but we have. Um, I had that myself. That sweating. <laughs> I had that myself. This 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 feeling that it's just. You know, I just need to find the right thing. I need to write the fine, uh, the fine food, right food, or the right supplement, or the right medication. And um, it's kind of deep, deep in our system that you know, find the right cure, and then you see it, you, it works, and you recover quickly. That's it, right? But um, that's one of the healing tips that tripped me up for a long, long time, because um, what really happens is I was ending. Um, I was ending up in self-judgment and I felt powerless over a decade because I was always thinking, you know, like this should work now, right? It's not working or it worked a little bit and then it didn't work anymore. And what to do now? Um, if you, by the way, if you want to learn more about how healing really happens and what's required from you to heal, because it's not an easy journey. It's not a slow ride or it's not a uh, smooth ride or anything like that. If you would like to learn more about that, I recorded a training specifically for that. I call it Masterclass. And it gives you a simple head start in how to heal digestive issues. Um, but it's also about chronic health issues in general. So if you would like to learn more about that, you all have to do is go to my, it's for free. You can watch it for free. It's an hour long class. And I put the link in the description below. You can look at it. I think it says peggyshomer.com slash masterclass. So that's one thing um, that might help you if you're somebody who has that question, how long is it going to take? Um, I definitely relate to this and I have that, that question with my clients all the time. So um, to summarize that and to give an answer to how long it's going to take, healing is a slow process. It's slow and it's not a miracle. 
Like it's not, we sometimes be like, oh, oh my God, I'm healed. You know, it's not, it's also not like, oh, I started a business. It's never gonna, nothing really great just happens like that. You know, there, it might look like that from the outside, but usually people who healed themselves, that it was a long groundwork before, long groundwork. And um, the thing about this, why I'm saying it's not a miracle, is because if your body has the right ingredients to heal, if it has the right healing environment, there's nothing that can stop the body. You know, because the body is always working for us, 100%, no autoimmune disease, that's complete BS, because we haven't understood the body. So that's why we give it a label. You know, my mother had got the label multiple sclerosis, autoimmune disease, can't do anything, can't heal, and she accepts the label, and she's completely in the victim mode. I tried to get her out, but it's not, it's not going to work. I tried it for too long, and um, it's just, that's just it, you know? We think like, okay, the body's attacking itself. What can I do? You know, body is against me. But it's not like that. It's never like that. Nowhere in nature does the body, is any organism attacks itself. It attacks a virus, it attacks a bacteria. And just because we haven't understood it yet, um, doesn't mean that it's like that. So if the body has the right ingredient, it, it will heal itself. It's working all the time. Um, and the most important lesson that I learned like over all those years of healing myself and also working with one-on-one clients and now with the Gut Feeler Academy is that not, don't try to, to mess up the tempo of the body. Of the, uh, you know, the body has its own, own tempo. It has its own rhythm. The liver, for example, doesn't release toxins like, you know, you, you, you press a button and then the liver like, yeah, poof, release all the toxins. We would be dead, completely intoxicated, um, blood poisoning, de dead immediately. So the body is very smart. But the way we approach the body is really like a car or the way we've been taught is more about we need to force this. We need to make this happen, speed things up. But it's not going to work. It's not. It's Usually when things are like, you know, you get, you get better really quick with just one thing, it's usually something that forces the body to do something that it has nothing to do with healing. And then later, bath, you pay back in credit and you feel worse than before. So see, antibiotics are one of the best uh, examples for that. So um, slow and steady, slow and steady. And if you get quick results, it's great, but be prepared that it also goes down again can go down again and it's not about the magic diet or the pill it's really it's con continuously working forward continuously staying on track checking in with your body aligning adjusting but moving forward in a slow steady process that's when we pay off it's called also compound effect in the business world so the more often you do it the more better better you see results but in the beginning, it looks like nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Or you just get worse. Like you get more um, pimples or more diarrhea or whatever you've been dealing with or more acid reflux. But that's because things are, you know, the body's detoxing, which also creates damage and which needs time as well. So um, I talked so much, guys. But I thought this is going to be interesting for you. Um, so how long does it take? Sometimes it's weeks. But that's really the exception. Like weeks is, is usually something that has to do with acute, uh, acute condition. Chronic issues, they have been building up over years, sometimes mostly over decades before we get actually symptoms from the body. So that's this kind of, you can put like just a tree. You know, you have a tree. The thing that you see on top, the leaves and the trunk, it's the same thing under the under the ground. It's the same the same height and the same volume under the ground. It's the same with that. So if you've been dealing if you've been um, ill for a long long time, it also takes a while. Um, what really helps to stay on track, which I always recommend, even um, like right now with my new client here, Lisa, um, she's also thinking of joining. Um, in my case, it's the Gut Feeler Academy, which I'm offering. It's a six month program. And what that can do for you is not just that you get somebody who can help you like the expert or the per like me in, in this case, the, the natural path um, to help you stay on track, but it also offers you peer support. And I feel like really after doing all these one-on-one -on -one sessions, I really feel like this is an integral part of, of healing, having like the support from people who are looking in the same direction. 
you know, who might be, not everybody might be doing celery juice, but everybody, you know, looks in the same direction, has like the same approach to healing. And that's uh, something that in Lisa's case, for example, her environment is not, they are supporting it. They are not against it, but they don't understand it. You know, she has a family, has, she has two kids, a husband, they're eating meat, they're, you know, normal diet, normal diet. And um, it's hard. It's hard if you do it all alone. And especially when you are when you are getting better, 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 and then you're doing nothing wrong and you're just feeling worse. And everybody tells you, yeah, you shouldn't eat so, so much, do, 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 or you shouldn't do this and this and this. And when you then don't have anybody, um, not you know, you don't have a peer support, you don't have a support group, then it's hard to stay on track and not just, you know, jumping on the next thing and going to the next test and running to the next doctor. So this is why I created the Gut Feeler Academy. It was really like an organic process out of the one-on-one -on -one consulting. I did that for three years, just, you know, 300 plus clients, just one-on-one, one-on-one, one-on-one. And now I'm transitioning more to group coaching and really offering this, this platform and this meeting ground for gut feeders to meet and to support each other as well. So if that's something that interests you, I also have that on the website, um, peggyshermer.com. And then um, it's there when you click on support in the menu. Um, or if you just watch the masterclass at the end, I'm also talking about the Gut Feeler Academy, if that's something that interests you. Okay, guys. So that was my little speech here to how long does it take to heal? Let me know if that, if that was interesting um, for you. Is that interesting, these little stories about clients? Hi, Mark. Guys, you're late. You missed the best part. <laughs> Let me know. Should I should I continue with these stories like next time, or you feel like oh, I just wanted my my question answered? I don't want to listen to anything else. What do you say? Okay, because I'm flexible, guys. I tell these stories just be for you. You know, I share these stories because I think it might be helpful. And, and I always, I always want to listen, you know, what you're saying, is it really helpful? Because it's your time too, you know, I know it's, um, this is precious, time is always precious, and I want to make sure um, we spend that time well for you. Stories have answers, I love that, yes, yes, I think so too. Helicopter, okay guys. <laughs> So the way the question it was uh, is somebody here new the first time anybody new just say me i here anybody new first time joining the live q a should i do my speech should i do my speech yes okay hi guys silence violence go vegan and Mohammed noor Claudia is new as well. Amazing. Okay, guys. So the way these live Q&A works is there's a certain format to use in order for me to see better who asked the question. Because sometimes gut feeders, oh, Alison, Darlene, you're all new. Hello. Hi, gut feeders, new gut feeders. Um, the way this works is in order for um, to make your question stand out, um, use three question marks in front of your question. If you look at other um, and other gut feelers, like here, our gut feelers member, Natasha, um, she already modeled this be beautifully. If you go up to um, a little bit up on the chat, she already modeled that with three question marks in front and then post your question. If at some point you feel you get drowned in the question, there are too many people. Today there are not so many, but we'll be fine. Um, then you can always, you know, use that super chat button or even better, join the uh, gut feeler academy membership if you want to support the channel and like those live q and a's this is really what makes them happen like san here those are the the, the gut feelers who are green san and natasha in this case um yeah then you can do that too okay so let's get started oh guys i'm a little bit tired i, I forgot to tell you something um personal because I sometimes like. I just got my, let me see if I have it here. Da, da, da. I've been waiting for that so long. Now I can't find it. Oh yeah, it's here. See what this is? 
It's a driver's license. It's the first driver's license I got in my life. My Panamanian driver's license. And it was quite a struggle. I'm not going to pack out that story. But my friend told me like, oh, you should share that. You should share that. But it has nothing to do with gut healing. So I'm not going to do it. Um, it was just what, what, such a long journey. And I feel like I'm now welcomed into the adult you know, the I'm now fully adult because I can rent a car. Yo, and I couldn't do that before. I don't have any other license in any country. Um, so this is my first one. I'm a driving worship vir virgin, like a virgin. Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm gonna fly out of Panama tomorrow, and I'm not gonna tell yet where, but it's gonna be it's gonna be great. And I got all the tests. You know the. Uh, the antivirus test i'm not going to say the name because who knows what youtube does and you get like this horrible like a brush inside your your nose it's so painful and you have to pay like 45 dollars for it to do the antigen test <laughs> no comment but it's done i got the results i'm officially negative and i'm allowed to travel so wow just to share that with you guys in case you're interested okay coming to your questions <laughs> Shireen um, my cycle is 17 days late never happened before how can I fix this how can I fix this how can I fix the body no I, I understand um, so I'm, I'm guessing that you're not pregnant um, because you know you would have come to that conclusion yourself um, well what happens in case you are on the healing journey right now um, those, those changes in cycle is very common. So when the body, um, another smart way of the body, so it can go in both directions. More often I hear the story that um, women have been very regular for a longer period of time, and then they start a healing journey, maybe they're doing more celery juice, um, eating lower fat, you know, whatever you're doing, taking more zinc, B12, mm -mm -mm, you fill in the blank. And then the body uses this time for, um, for cleansing. Meaning the body naturally prolongs the the ovulation time and the period time to sh because it's such a uh, such a big thing for the body. You know, when the body is in in the um, cleansing phase, I call it cleansing phase, the period time it takes eighty percent of your immune system just to cleanse the uterus and keep everything shiny and create new life. Yeah, B build the base for a new life, new potential life, and that's a huge. A huge, huge burden, not burden, huge um, work for the body. So it's very smart um, sometimes that the body just prolongs those phases, you know, so it, it, um, it can focus on other things. So, of course, you know, I cannot give you a medical diagnosis um, from Panama City to wherever you are, Shirin, um, but it's something that I, I see is very common, especially if you're just starting a healing journey or if you have a healing dip. Um, watching your overall health, you know, how you're feeling and there's nothing to fix. That's another thing. It's not always just because things are different that there's something that you need to fix. The body fixes itself. You know, we are creating the heat environment and then we let the body do its thing. That's the most important um, message also that I wanted to share before. Let me know if that makes sense. <sighs> Ayofe, Ryan, what are the best things to eat to heal adrenal fatigue apart from fruits and vegetables? Why are you saying apart from fruits and vegetables? What should I, why, why should there some be, why should there something else? Um, for adrenal fatigue, it's really, um, you need glucose, you need healthy glucose, and you need a ton of electrolytes. That's it. Because you don't want the body to go back into this, um, into the flight and fight and flight mode. And the only reason why the body goes into the fight and flight mode, unless um, like taking stress and like mental sh stress and things like that out, like from a purely physical body perspective, is because your liver doesn't have enough glycogen, storage form of glucose. Then liver, you know, doesn't have enough glycogen, but your brain needs healthy glucose. What happens? The adrenals get activated, adrenaline gets flushed out in the body, and then all the glucose reserves from everybody, uh, from everybody, from everywhere get like purged out. And, um, you know, adrenaline is like credit card payment. Really, really, really erosive if that's happening over a long time. So, taking care of your adrenal health is a very smart way. 
one of the best ways apart from fruits and vegetables is coconut water. Coconut water, barley grass juice powder, really good. You need B12, you need the good B12. Where is it? Let's get it. Let's get the good B12 because I'm taking it every day as well and there's nothing better. Yep. Hop. That one. You see this? That's the one you want to get. And if you have adrenal fatigue, I even recommend to do that twice per day. Twice per day, a drop of four would be amazing. Can you see me here? It's a nice painting there, huh? I really like it. So that's it. I should take mine today. And then you hold it under your tongue for like 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Because under your tongue, there are a lot of blood vessels and it's really easy to absorb. And like the first, the first uh, best absorption point. <clears throat> That's why toothpaste can be so toxic. You have got to look at your, what you use for toothpaste because it just, you know, the body, the, the, um, the inside of the mouth is so absorbable for all kinds of chemicals. So we use it in a good way here with the V12. Let me know if that helped, Ryan. Okay, let me see. Three question marks. Remember, guys, always in the front. This is what I'm looking for. Mila. You know, Mila, I always wanted to, because you're here a lot, I wanted to share with you that I love this name. I love your name because um, I mean, I'm not sure if you know this, but there was this um, this Japanese anime movie, uh, no, the series that I watched like all my childhood. I think it started like 11 and I started to watch it till 18. And it was about the volleyball uh, woman, like a young, young um, student who played volleyball and volleyball was my love. Like it still is, it's like my favorite sport on planet earth. And every day after school, I was like, I can't do anything else. I was like angry at my dad if he disturbed me. And I'm like, no, it's Mila time. It's Mila time. And then I watched like 25 minutes of Mila, you know, which a lot of exercise and matches and stuff. And then I went out with my volleyball, my white leather volleyball and went out um, and was, you know, doing all kinds of um, serves and things against the wall. Um, <laughs> yeah. And every day, every day, it was so good. Okay, Mila, <laughs> so that's what your, your name reminds me of. Um, is it okay to drink my heavy metal detox smoothie before my celery juice in the morning, like 25 minutes apart? And when should I take lemon water? Okay, cool. So lemon water first, 20 minutes, if you want to do all three. Lemon water first, 20 to 25 minutes is fine. Then the celery juice, wait again, half an hour, and then the heavy metal detox smoothie. Smoothie last. If you want to do just celery juice, just celery juice, and then heavy metal detox smoothie. Easy answered question. Because the, the smoothie is, um, you know, is not as liquid. And celery juice is best absorbed if you have it on empty stomach. Lemon water doesn't count in that case. You can also do it the other way around if you prefer. Um, for first celery juice, then lemon water. But the heavy metal detox smoothie always lasts. Okay, guys. Guys. Gut feelers, more questions. Remember the free question marks in the beginning so I can see your question better. Alison, Alison Ambrose. Hi, Peggy, I enjoy your videos, thank you. Uh, is nightshade bad for the thyroid because I've heard so much negative things? I have consumed them for years. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad you consumed them for years because that's one of those, you know, don't eat fruits, they have too much sugar. Don't eat... Tomatoes, they have too much lectins. Don't eat potatoes, they are nightshade. What's next? You know, eat more, coco drink coconut oil and um, eat five eggs for breakfast. It's, a, it's complete BS. Unless you feel like a really strong sensation, if you eat like a tomato or an aubergine, you know, there, then I would recommend, I would not even say that you're allergic because that word is also abused. Same like love, allergic. It's both completely misunderstood abused words. Um, I would go for, you know, if, if you have like really massive reaction, which it doesn't sound like it, then, but for everybody else, then I would, you know, keep the food for now. Don't eat it. You know, if your body tells you like, I hate this, eat less or don't eat it. 
Um, but if you don't have any symptoms, potatoes, here. Potatoes are the best. I have perfect thyroid health. I'm eating potatoes all the time. You know, they are cooked already. They're already waiting for me to make dinner. I love potatoes. I love tomatoes. I love aubergines. I have it all in my in my fridge right now. They are amazing. They have tomatoes have vitamin C like nuts. Potatoes have all kinds of electrolytes, potassium. They are great for your liver. Um, they're just awesome. Tomato uh, to potatoes are so grounding. They are one of the best things that I recommend to clients who are dealing with anxiety, with feelings that they don't really have, you know, like stability in their life. Unemployment. Eat more potatoes. You know, because it's so grounding. And those guys, um, if you ever did gardening, I'm really, I'm like doing some advertisement. Buy this potato, buy this potato. 20% off today's Thanksgiving, Black Friday, buy this potato. No. Um, but what, if, what these guys do is they, um, if you do anything with gardening, I was a gardener for three years in Scotland. Um, they, they are the roots of potatoes. They are one of those um, plants that draw the most nutrients out of the out of the earth. This is why you shouldn't plant potatoes always in the same spot, but always, you know, alternate and rotate. So those you get all those good, all those nutrients. They are in here. They are in this boring-looking, really tasty, comforting potato. So nightshades, yay! Good for thyroid health. Don't don't go crazy with that one. Long answer, um, but I get it. Sometimes I get too excited. Okay. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> Hi, Stephen. Happy Thanksgiving as well. Okay, question marks. Natasha. Oh, Natasha. So, Natasha. Natasha, gut feelings. Remember, what ingredients are bad in supplements, such as citric acid, um, methyl cellulose, etc.? Um, got a video on that one. I got a bit because I don't know them all in my brain, but those ones definitely. Um, I've got a video on that one. If you look for Natasha for um, probably gut feelings, like in YouTube, you know, youtube.com and then those this um, magnifying glass, then you click on that one and then you look for gut feelings and supplements. And then there should uh, come something like the five worst ingredients in supplements. And I've also, if you want to dive deeper and you want some printouts and you want a little tutorial going with that, I've got created a product called My Gut Supplement Kit. Um, it's pretty cheap and it's actually really good. I'm not saying that lightly. Let me just see. I'm just looking that I can get give you the URL. Just one second. So you can check that out. There's also preview and everything. Uh, uh, uh. Peggy, what are you doing? Self-coaching. Here. I think this is it. Let me just check. The internet is slow. So... No, that's not the one. Hang in with me. I'm just looking at the product itself. I still had these pink hair, which is really looks really bad. <laughs> you can laugh and laugh yourself about me. Okay. Okay, gut supplement kit. I've got the URL for you. So you want, you can check that out or the free one on YouTube. It gives you like some first information. But for going more into depth, that one is good. I posted it in the, uh, the chat box. Let me know if you got that, Natasha. Okay. Ah, Claudia, good question. Best, Claudia Bosca, Bosgra, best time to take zinc. Zinc, 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 zinc. Best time to take zinc. Um, 
Well, I tell you when it's the worst time to take zinc, and that would be on an empty stomach. Anybody of you guys ever took zinc and took it on a slightly empty or completely empty stomach? I definitely was one of them. Anybody? Let me know. Well, that would be the worst part because heavy metals in general, iron, zinc, um, healthy heavy metals, never on an empty stomach. Apart from that, with food, whenever you want. You know, um, in the beginning, if you're just starting with the zinc, and it should be this one, it should be a liquid zinc sulfate with um, nothing else in there apart from pure. Oh God, where's the apart from pure grade, pure water, natural ingredients? Well, I can confirm that there's nothing else in it. And um, that one is so concentrated, this one, that you need just five drops, five to 10 drops. So if you're just starting, do two times five drops with food. And once you feel like, oh, I'm okay, you can do 10 to 20 drops, depending on you know how your immune system is looking right now. That's the best way to take zinc with food, you know, whenever, whenever you want, just not in an empty stomach. Um, by the way, all those supplements that I'm holding here, I've got them all collected on my website where you get like the direct links and sometimes with some bonuses because this is a brand I love and I work together with. And then sometimes you get like a discount code when you put in the code word like Peggy or things like that. Um, you find them all on my shop website, which is basically my, my name, PeggyShermer.com slash shop. They are also, it's also in the description if you want to check that out. Ba 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 ba. Any tips? Okay. Mahid, hala, Said. Any tips for migraines or tension headaches? Yes, drink more. Drink more. You need definitely zinc and B12 for helping the nervous system to relax. B12 is essential if you got any viral load or bacterial um, things happening in your body, pathogens, then zinc will help as well. Um, and then um, migraines and tensions. I would definitely focus on drinking coconut water to give the potassium to the brain. And what um, coconut water and in general things that contain glucose like fruits do as well, they cool down the brain. There's nothing, if you, if you burn yourself with a spice, you know, you eat too much chili, what, what, what do you want to do? You want to drink sugar water. Of course, you don't want to do that. You know, I'm just giving that example. But like sugar cools down, cools down heat. And often migraines and, um, you know, tension headaches, there is, there is something going on in the brain. There's some swelling. There may be some, some neurotoxins, which are basically the poo of viruses, like Epstein-Barr. Say it like really um, simply. <laughs> um, and that stuff infl in, inflames the nervous system. And then you got all kinds of um, pain or pressure in the head. So focusing on a high fruit diet, uh, low fat, um, get the B12, get the zinc, drink as much as possible, and especially coconut water. Okay. Oh, guys, my eyes are getting tired. I've been, I've been so excited about this whole driving license thing. I also just flew to the other side of the country to do the test and then stayed in the hotel, loud, noisy hotel for a night and then flew back. And now I did the COVID test and it's like, oh, wow, and tomorrow I'm leaving the country. I've been waiting for that since March and now it's happening. So I'm a little bit like, I've got some eye rings, I think. Mm, yeah, I'm probably going to sleep like at 7 p.m. <laughs> I don't know. Crazy times. I'm just excited to be able to share that with you and yeah, hopefully be helpful here as well. Ah, SL2NYC. <laughs> what a lovely YouTube username. Uh, hey Peggy, how much fat is recommended to eat during the day? I've been doing the celery juice in the morning and I have a met detox smoothie and eat lots of salad, fruit and lower fat. Uh, well, first of all, everything contains fat. That's another thing. Almost everything contains small amounts of fat. So if, if my clients, for example, tell me like, isn't that unhealthy to eat no fat? You know, I haven't eaten fat for free weeks and I'm like I don't think so I don't think you haven't eaten fat for three years uh, for three weeks because there's fat in everything um so the less the better if you want to heal fast and um you feel like it's 
it, it, the detox process is not too fast for you because sometimes when people get anxiety attacks and stuff like that, you got to have more potatoes and maybe a little bit of avocado to just ooh, make them a little bit heavy and slow down. But if you're feeling well, the least, the less of those fats like nuts, seeds, um, definitely no oil and coconut oil and stuff like that, less avocados, the better, the faster you heal, definitely. So um, I'm not giving like grams recommendation because it's not my style i'm also not you know in the uh, in the one week gut healing uh, challenge this is something that you know whenever whoever is listening guys if you just want to get started and you want to have like a, a the best diet you can have for healing your gut um and also get like meal meal support how do you say like recipes meal support <laughs> shopping list background information some supplement um recommendations as well then the gut healing challenge is a good one and um, in that, you will find that there is, you know, I don't do this stuff. I don't tell you, like, eat two bananas, not three, two bananas, and then um, one tea drop of this and one tea drop of that. I'm giving, like, um, recommendations so you can feel into your body because everybody is different. Maybe for you it's good to eat five bananas in the morning. Maybe you feel full after you eat one banana. Who am I to force five bananas into you if you feel full? You know, so this is like a a paradigm shift that really needs to, that is about to happen, you know, with all of the, all of us gut feeders that um, it's not just about what somebody else out there tells you, you know, if I tell you eat five bananas, you know, and you feel like you don't want to eat five bananas, then please trust yourself. You know, don't, don't listen to anybody when it doesn't feel good in your gut, you know, in your gut feelings. And that's easier said than done because we're often confused, you know, or it's like, it sounds good, but then it doesn't feel right. And what's, this is why I'm creating the Gut Feel Academy and why I'm doing this work with you here, guys, to, to help, you know, understanding and help adjusting what you're doing. Okay, I hope that answered the question for you. I know I'm getting excited and then I say other things. Okay, guys, let's do a few more here. David, hi David, David even, also took two two week course of Xifaxine, I think that's an antibiotic, back in September. This is all started in August with Echerichia coli. It is not a question. Doctor won't test me for SIBO, not sure if I have it, I'll start. How can I stop the upper abdominal cramping? Doctor won't test you for SIBO. Well, that's a good thing. Um, more tests, not better. Not sure if I have it. Well, uh, this all started with HRHR coli. So HRHR coli, by the way, E. coli is not your problem. Never. It's, it's a nasty bacterium, but that's not the issue. That's not, you know, even H. pylori, who often gets like, wow, the bad H. pylori, I need to get rid of the bad, 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 the bad H. pylori. Yes, they all can cause symptoms, but the real bad guys, this is uh, resistant strains of strep, there are viruses, and then, of course, they're all, you know, like those um, things like H. coli and, and um H. pylori and streptococcus, they are kind of, you know, they are making love there in your stomach. They are kind of liking each other. It's not that they are like, oh, ugh, I don't like you, I kill you. No. Um, so this is why often those things, they all come together. And sooner or later, you have, end up with all these medications and misdiagnosis. So it's very hard for me to say, um, David, what is going on for you, because I don't know you. Um, how can you stop the upper abdominal cramping. Well, cramping um, is a reaction that occurs when the body's in stress, you know, when the body wants to get rid of something. So this is what, this is what that has, the contraction, get stuff out. So um, definitely celery juice is a good thing. Um, getting onto a healing protocol, working with somebody who's, you know, not giving you all kinds of uh, antibiotics and things like that. A naturopath, maybe there's somebody in your region who you know, works with medical medium, who also does celery juice, things like that. You can also just, like, watch all the gut feelings videos, literally. I put everything out there. You know, I'm holding nothing back about um, 
I have things about stomach pain. You definitely want to work on your um, stomach acid. You want to need you need the good stomach acid. Now you might have stomach, you might have acid in your stomach, but it's the acid that bacteria produces. This is why people, when they get um, these acid blockers, they actually get worse because it's 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 blocking your good stomach acid, but it's not blocking the um, the bacteria because the good stomach acid your hcl is there to kill that bacteria that's the the whole point of it to help digesting and to help kill um, pathogens but if you numb this then we have even more overgrowth of pathogens so that's why this is such a, a problem and i'm not even talking about antibiotics you know what they do for your liver or, or to your liver and to your whole overall uh, microbiome and to your system so um, yeah, that would be my re would by, would be my recommendation. Tired, not talking anymore um, about stomach. Uh, increase your stomach acid and drink celery juice and watch some of the gut feelings videos and maybe do the gut healing challenge. If you're new to a healing diet and you don't know what to eat, then that's definitely something. It's very affordable. Um, it's also linked below. It's called peggyshumacom slash gut healing challenge. I think that's the link. Uh, you will find it as well. Or gut healing guide. That's how I call it. You can get started with that one week um, to see some first results and just get oriented what is a good diet to, yeah, to get started and not taking more antibiotics. Okay, guys, last but not least. One more question, one more question. Tara, Tara Naturals, you are the first one, so I'm happy to answer your question. Um, what's the difference between naturopath and nutritionist? Aha, great question. Well, nutritionist, um, I mean, those words really, they don't mean anything. Like I would not trust anybody just because they have a label. You know, I'm not naming names right now, but there are some, you know, experts in the field that have like huge names, you know, and then you just look at what they're doing and they're doing what every other person does and what all the, the standard protocol from doctors do. They don't do anything for you. So, um, <laughs> Thanks, Paul. So, nutritionist focuses mainly on food. Mainly on food is not really that skilled in, um, in you know, in all kinds of diseases and things. They have some, you know, how to treat diabetes and stuff. But they are more. Um, I would say it's it's a little bit smaller. The uh, the um, the expert uh, area is like focused on on food. And when you have a natural path, a natural path. Like for me, for example, like I studied medicine for four years, um, but, and then afterwards I did the, um, became a naturopath. And for me, it was, um, I needed to basically have like the, the basic university knowledge from like all emergency stuff, all, you know, infections, um, you know, basically knowing the limits of a naturopath, where not to wave with. Um, incense sticks when the person is on the floor um, with a bee sting and everything is swollen then to you know call the ambulance and get adrenaline into that body um, so those things you know this is not something that uh, necessary a nutritionist would know you know all kinds of these emergency protocols and things like that and the natural path also often has like alternative treatments you know like homeopathy acupuncture um, things like that in the in the protocol which a nutritionist doesn't necessarily have okay i hope that makes and nothing against nutritionists by the way um you know i don't have any you know and nothing against doctors neither or other naturopaths um it's all you know the label doesn't really tell you much but my best suggestion is if you want somebody local talk to them uh get a gut feeling from them ask them some some edgy questions see how they react um and you will know like for example when um when I first got into the medical medium information, I knew. I mean, that guy, if when he's talking, he's just the weirdest person ever. You know. But when I when I when I connected to that the first time, I was like, I knew this is this is right. You know, this is this is it. And um, not this is it, but this is like there's something to it. And this is um, something we all can co cultivate. This is what I believe really strongly that if you hear something that is true for you, you will feel it. You will feel it. And then if, if we learn to listen to quieten the mind a little bit and really trust this, this intuitive connection, and then we can dig deeper with the mind. But first, like allowing this, this knowledge, which is beyond our, what we can with our brain cells understand, um, first 
letting that in. Same with food choices. You know, like um, what I'm doing in the Gut Feeder Academy, for example, with the students is one of those exercises is understanding um, how to feel a yes and a no from your body. You know, when you are touching a certain food or you're touching a supplement and you might not know if it's toxic or not or good for you, you can actually ask your body if that's the right thing for you. And there are signals. In the beginning, they are very small and then they get louder. And at some point, you just have to look at the thing and you know exactly the answer. Um, this is what it's all about, becoming a gut feeder, becoming a, your own health expert. So you don't have to, you know, get to more tests and whatever comes up, you feel like, wow, I have an expert here with me all the time. And this, you don't have to study natural power. You don't have to become natural power or study medicine for that. This is just about learning, understanding your body. Okay, guys. So thank you so much. It's been an hour with you. It's been a pleasure. Um, let me know what you've taken away from this, from this live Q&A, if anything. I would love to know um, either right now in the chat or in the comments below. And I wish you a beautiful journey wherever you travel to or wherever you're inside and out. And happy Thanksgiving for everybody who watched live. I'm really thankful that you're here and I wish you a smooth healing journey and lots of fun on the way.